It's been a long, hard day of campaigning and Kowei is going right down to the wire. And it's a difference this time around in the Tamil Nadu elections with Lok Sabha that the attention is not in Chennai, but at the second largest city because that's where everybody thinks it's going to be a tight fight. Somebody who's been in the thick of all the action, BJP President, Thiru K. Annamalai, Wanakam, Ramonandri, it's late in the evening. You've had a long day, but uh, are you really the joker in the pack? Because that's what some people are calling you now, Annamalai. Who is calling, sir? Dayanidhi Maran, sir, is also calling you a joker. I think uh, the world's greatest leader, living leader, has given the reply. So if I give a reply, it doesn't look nice. <laughs> the world's greatest leader has replied. So I am a mere small man, rearing some sheep and doing some agriculture and being a party karikarta. So if I reply, it will go over PM Modi's reply. So I'll just wait. How does it feel that Prime Minister uh, is himself so effusive in his praise for you, even in his interview with the ANI and at the rally the other day? Oh, sir, the Honourable PM, sir, is, uh, is very kind to us, very kind to Tamil Nadu BJP. He has given a lot of time to us. Uh, of course, he does a very punishing schedule on himself, but still he finds a time and whenever we call him, and uh, 2022, 23, 24, if you look at all the three years, every time when the party has asked him to come, PM sir has responded and he has come. That to this 2024, uh, from January 2nd, Ram Prana Pratishta, then uh, right up to pre-campaigning, after the uh, selection of candidates in the next round of campaigning, PM has been too kind. It is not because PM is doing this politically, it is simply because PM has got Tamil Nadu a special place in his heart. And uh, whenever he praises me, it is not that he is praising Anamla, he is praising probably a person on behalf of Karyakarta. That's how I see it. And whatever I do and represent, I represent all the Karyakartas, I represent the BJP party. So I take it that way, that PM is of course uh, appreciating our hard work, of course appreciating all the Karyakartas hard work. I am hmm. just a face towards it. Hmm. Today, I, earlier in the day, I met uh, Singhai Ramchandran also on the campaign trail here in Kowai. The call from there is that you are an import. You are from Karur, what are you going to do in Coimbatore? He himself is a born and brought up in Coimbatore. The other opponent here in the three-way fight is a former mayor of Coimbatore. And the BJP has always seen its success, even out of the nine out of, uh, nine out of the 11 assembly constituencies now are with the AIDMK. The one that is with the BJP, the ADMK says that's also because it was their vote that helped the BJP win there. So why fight from an area like Coimbatore, which is the ADMK bastion? Is there a underlying message there that needs to be relayed? No, it's a very clear message we are sending, sir. And uh, June 4th will also send a very clear message from the people of Tamil Nadu that Coimbatore people will elect BJP with a record margin. I'm again telling that BJP will corner 60% of the votes polled in the city, in the whole parliamentary constituency. And now that's where the fight is. As a political party president, I have to go where the fight is. I can't just shy away from there and look for something else. When ADMK claims it is their fort, hmm. when BJP claims it is our fort, when DMK claims it is our fort, their fort, then it is up to the people. I am very, very confident that we have done a lot of groundwork and uh, the love and respect for Honorable PM is so high. And of course, DMK and ADMK, I am challenging in this Coimbatore. They have already done the first round of money distribution, 500 rupee per vota. So we are running a very clean campaign and uh, we are telling the people that uh, let us do positive politics. And uh, this election result in Coimbatore is going to set the tone for the next level of politics in Tamil Nadu. And I'm very, very confident and sure the people of Coimbatore adore Modi ji and they like the current government 10 years of our performance. So it is a no-brainer that BJP will, will, will win with a record margin in Coimbatore. So if you're so confident, then why are you campaigning even beyond the stipulated hours? That's I the have charge to meet people. I'm not campaigning beyond stipulated hours. People are there. I have to meet people. I can't sit in the room and say, I'm not going to meet you. That is arrogance. A leader has to be in the ground, meet everybody. But the allegation and is, you are campaigning on the campaign. Money. You're, you're campaigning I don't respond to allegations, I respond to fact. Do you have a fact? Have you seen me campaigning after 10? Do you have a video proof? Can you put out in uh, CNN News 18? Has the police given you a videograph of, I've spoken after 10? Uh, the video are that's doing the rounds says Anna Malay on top of a bus and he's shaking hands. So, and they say the time is past 10 p.m. It's around 10.30 in the evening. The election commission guidelines and rules are very clear. After 10, you are not supposed to operate the mic, you are not supposed to speak, you are not supposed to campaign, you are not supposed to seek votes, and you are not supposed to speak about yourself or about the party. It's very clear. And all the routes are 
predetermined, pre-designated for which permission was taken. Invariably, the last two points, when you run a very hard campaigning, almost 40, 45 points every day, the last four, five points invariably get delayed. People assemble, people are waiting for three, four hours. It is your duty to go there, at least say namaste, say sorry, and tell them that I will come back again another day. Today I have gone to a point called Irugur, mm. which we missed it. Again, I did it today, I have gone one more point. So the election commission rules are very clear. Don't do campaigning. It never says uh, the candidate should jump out the vehicle at 9.59, run away, hide in the house and lock the room. So is there somebody who does not want you to campaign? You just may mention Irudur, 4% energy after a long day, but 400% output there. What is the reason? Sir, you know, I am a fighter, sir. I am a very aggressive fighter. I am not here to sit in the chair and spend my time and uh, uh, get into power. I am here to grow the party. My intentions are very clear. I am a pakka street fighter. And my politics is on the ground. I don't sit in the AC room and do politics. So, Yerugur is one such fight. The other day, the police have prevented me from getting into Yerugur. Today, uh, we, we wanted to prove a point that uh, Yerugur people are with us and they will come out, they will support and uh, they will stand with us. Even if we cancel that point and go back second time within 24 hours. That is what we wanted to do. And people of Yerugur and Coimbatore has been very kind wherever we go. Their support for us is truly overwhelming. So that crowd there was BJP Carter? Was it organized? Everywhere it is 80% public, sir. 80% public. So if in the heart of Coimbatore and a place like Virudur, which is supposed to be a stronghold of certain leaders, if that's the turnout, what's the message? 60% votes polled will go to BJP. I'm saying this again and again. I read the ground well. I'm in the ground and uh, people are very clear, sir. And uh, Coimbatore is one kind of city where you can't just buy people with money and the typical Tamil Nadu politics of adjustment politics between Dravidian party, throwing money, trying to purchase voters, doesn't work here. And second, Coimbatore city is a self-made, it's a self-respecting city and likewise many cities in Tamil Nadu as well. But this time, it's a very prestige battle for the DMK because DMK has deployed 7-8 ministers and the full intelligence team is deployed here, they don't want to lose this at any cost. The ADMK claims this is their bastion and all the MLAs are with them and that is their fort. And we are not here to pick up any small fights. We are here for civilizational fight. And we want to bring Dharmic renewal. We want to show the people that a positive politics still has got place in Tamil Nadu. And that when Modiji is going to come back with a thumping majority, Tamil Nadu should contribute in a positive way. Not buying voters with money and not doing all this harakai. You a civilizational fight, that's a big statement. Why do you say it's a civilizational so fight? What, what do you see, sir? Why, why are we standing alone? We are, we are propagating our ideology, we are talking what we are. And 2019 nobody could speak because you are part of a larger alliance. And you are standing in five seats, ADMK is standing in the rest. And our cadres were not even allowed to campaign on the ground. And you couldn't even say what is right and wrong. Because it was an ADMK centric campaigning in 2019. Because normally the bigger alliance partners will overshadow you. So right now the party leadership has taken a clear call that BJP is going alone. Our cadres are fighting tooth and nail. And our cadres are getting attacked by DMK. Our cadres are going convincing every per person why their vote matters to Modiji. So this is our fight. It is a renewal every time because we are doing a politics that is against the Dravidian era kind of politics. Against caste, money power, ab abuse of uh, uh, political power, administrative power. So right now, so this is first thing in Tamil Nadu's first step. You want to revive the civilizational glory. You've got to set right and say, I'm different. People have to see a difference in you. You cannot cling on to a Dravidian party and say that we are different. So 2024 is a very breath of fresh air for us. It's a very important election for us. People see what exactly is BJP bringing to the table. That decides the future course of Tamil Nadu politics. Meaning a 60% vote share you're saying. You're also saying that uh, it's a civilizational fight. I had a chat with SP Velumani earlier. He was campaigning for uh, Singhai Ramachandran. And he said ADMK first, DMK second, and BJP Anna Malai a distant third. That's his, and we, uh, you know, he is claimed to be the local Bahubali or the strong man in this place, former ADM uh, minister in the uh, jail. Local the Bahubali, MLA 10 years also. minister, you, you, uh, you generate money, you want to buy money with uh, people with money. And they, they call themselves Bahubali. <laughs> that era is over, sir. People who call themselves Bahubali, caste Bahubali, money Bahubali, and uh, that is over. India is teaching all this Bahubali is a lesson. Is it really over here on ground? Yeah, yeah, sir. UP got over, Bihar is getting over, Maharashtra will get over in 2024. Each state, all the Bahubalis are getting eliminated. Bahubalis are two ways, sir. Either you have a caste backup or you have money backup. Only two ways Bahubali operate. This is the era of common man politics. People want to stand behind an underdog, a common man. Of course, I know 
BJP in Coimbatore, where we are, we know, and where we are now, we know. And we know what ADMK was, and we know what ADMK is, is now. We are, we are not underestimating anything. We know exactly what is our strength. We know exactly what people's mindset is. The so-called Bahubali, the money power, muscle power. Tamil Nadu will put an end to it, all this nonsense. But you're money. saying in Coimbatore, caste doesn't matter. The Naidu caste will not come into play. Counters will not come to play. Kongu belt, so Kongu will not come into play. I don't do my campaigning on caste, sir, because I, I wore khaki for a long time. And once you wear khaki, I've transcended caste. And uh, for me, everybody is saying. But is that not a consideration on ground? Are you really no, saying that is, Tamil Nadu will transcend you, Everybody can transcend caste, sir. It is the message that you bring to them. And you do caste politics, people would like to do caste politics. You don't do caste politics, other people are willing to give you a chance. It is how you set foot as a candidate that matters. Many candidates are insecure, they want to cling to their caste and say, no, I can speak in this language, I'm this caste. No, I want to transcend it. And when will you transcend it? If you can't transcend that in a city like Coimbatore, then what is the point of doing politics? At the age of 39, still saying caste matters in 21st century India, in Modiji's era, and saying that, oh, put a caste like this. I don't believe in it. See, you've always talked about what Modi ji has done and that's your plank, that this is what the PM has done and we want to talk about the work that we want to do and we are done. So, how does Sundakai come into your lexicon? Oh, Sundakai meaning who, sir? You have to say. <laughs> you are the one who is saying so it. playing that thing, I will say now. I was just tracing in one of the speeches, uh, Honorable Prime Minister's journey. Um, 1950, T. Sellers family, Modi ji's mother, uh, washing utensils in five houses there. Leaders are made in the ground, sir. It is the dust and sweat and mud. You have to roll it over. And from there, leadership emerges. And that leadership is grounded. So, Modi is that kind of leader. Poor family, extremely poor, left his home, traveled, wandered, trying to find the life's purpose. 35, joining BJP from RSS as a Pracharak. You know the rest of yes. the story. I'm just comparing the evolution of a leader. Born with a golden spoon, third generation, cinema actor, doesn't even did one day's work to earn his meal. And then Uday Nidhi Stalin comments about PM Modi. Oh, I am going to give PM Modi a new name. I am going to call PM Modi by this. I said, you are bloody Sundakai. You are like, we are like, Sundakai is the smallest thing that you can eat. You are like that. And then you are not even equal to a dirt in Modi ji's foot. The evolution of a leader there. Modi ji is a world leader now. He is a leader of leaders. 2014, yes, of course he was an Indian leader. 2024, he's a world leader. And the context is very clear, sir. Iran attacking Israel, you don't know what Israel's reaction is going Get to it. be. Russia, Ukraine and fight. I am telling you, if there is one leader who can stop it, the third world war from coming, it is going to be Modi ji in 25, 26 kind of period. And the whole world is going to look at Modi ji in about one year from now. So you're talking of that kind of leader, simply because you have a mic, you have a pedigree, you have a family protection, and you want to call Modi ji by name. So I said, you are just a Sundakai. You should know your place before you comment on the other leaders. Mm. That's what they are saying about the BJP in terms of the party, saying 39 seats in the Lok Sabha. One Kovai Anamalai claims that he may win. Beyond that, what? So what is the BJP We then? will win many things, sir. You look at BJP's performance in June 4. Tamil Nadu, BJP will be in double digit, the numbers alone. Vote share, NDA will cross 35%. I am being very consistent. That is what is in the ground. And you will see this on June 4th also. People can underestimate, people can live, still live in 1960s, 1970s era. This has changed, sir. Ground is shifted. And who are these politicians, sir, who are saying, you lose power, three years sleep in home, fourth year do four at protestant agitation, fifth year you come to ground and say that I am different. This is a party that works 365 days, winning or losing. This is the party that works 24 by 7, winning or losing. In a way, for us, winning and losing doesn't matter because every day we do the same work. And Tamil Nadu is like, you lose, you sleep for three, hour, three years, leader of opposition, nothing you do. Then you wake up fourth year, you will say, oh, I will do three agitation so that I want my party presence to be felt. Then you say, oh, I am ready for the next year. This is how Tamil Nadu politics was for the last many, many years. And BJP is breaking it only because of our cadres. Very hard work, right up to the Prime Minister, to the lowest common denominator who is our booth president. So results have to inevitably show. It's only a matter of time, sir. Hard work cannot fail. All the cadres, 164 people getting arrested in 33 months. All film series at 2 o'clock barge into their home, pick them up in front of wife and kids, scare them. Only because they put some social media post, which High Court quashes one, one, one month later. They do this kind of nonsense, the common people are watching, sir. You cannot provoke a common people. 
common people are watching all the atrocities DMK is doing. And who is raising voice against the DMK? Who is suffering because of raising a voice against DMK? Who is going to jail? So inevitably this has to give you a result. It's a matter of time. Uh, you said you are telling the people when you are campaigning, I will do, take your case, Coimbatore's case to Parliament, to Modi ji and get things for Tamil Nadu and Coimbatore. So you put something for your Tambi your, and you are equating them as a family member. But does that mean that you will now then move to the Lok Sabha because you had other aspirations about doing more for the state? Sir, of course we are doing everything but there is a responsibility of a member of Parliament. Of course you cannot shed away that responsibility. If and when the Coimbatore people elect you with God's blessing, that responsibility is also equally important. That doesn't allow, that is not going to stop you from doing other duty. It is a party's call. The moment you stand for the people, you become their MP, it is important that you deliver what you have promised. And of course you can deliver, you can always balance things. Uh, it is only a matter of management, time management, hectic workload management. So you have to do it. People, people see you, if 2026 you have to make an attempt for BJP to come to power, sir. The MPs that who get elected now by the people of Tamil Nadu with people's blessings, whoever is getting elected in the state, they have to perform for the next 500 days, 600 days. That is equally important to show, look, we have changed the city. Now you want to change the state, please give us an opportunity. That is going to be a more powerful narrative than just criticizing DMK. Finally, last question. There are There's going to be a lot of first time voting. That means a lot of people may be voting for the BJP for the first time and also a lot of people may be voting for the first time. So what would you like to say to the youngsters and also the first-time voters? I would say, sir, a first-time voter is audacious. Uh, he thinks big, he or she. Doesn't fit into the conventions. They always think they can break everything and, and keep raising the bar. And if they look at all the attributes, it suits BJP. We are big believers in big thinking. We don't operate in incremental thinking. Our vision is very big. And 10 years of Modiji's government is just a testament to how big we think, the performance we have done, the unthinkable feat that our government has achieved. So I would, I would request all the first-time voters that you should look at a party that reflects your attitude, big vision.